Okay, this is the last bit of uh, math for the semester. Uh, so I apologize that you're going to have to deal with some math, but uh, here we go. All right, so um, let's see. We've got, uh, first of all, Ohm's Law. Ohm's Law is very simple. It's V is equal to IR, where V is for voltage. Um, and voltage is going to be measured in volts, all right? Uh, which symbol is a V. I'm just going to write that out. And the current uh, is I. That's measured in amps. Uh, symbol's an A. And then the final one is resistance. Resistance symbol is R. It's measured in what are called ohms. And its symbol is the Greek letter omega. All right? Uh, it's a funky-looking thing. Uh, you can see it like that. You You know, it technically probably looks more like this, uh, but I can't uh, draw it, so it kind of ends up looking like a ghost or something uh, when I draw it. Uh, the other one, uh, like basic formula that you need to know is power is equal to voltage times current. Um, so power is going to be measured in watts, just like it was uh, before when we did uh, power earlier in the year. Okay, so uh, there are two types of, of circuits. Uh, one is a series circuit. A series circuit is where one follows uh, another. Um, and so uh, each uh, one uh, is going to uh, have slightly different ways of adding stuff. So to start with, in a series circuit, you have uh, the total resistance of the system is added up. You just add them up, R1 plus R2 plus R3, and so on. Um, if you want the total voltage or the total current or the total resistance, you can use the Ohm's Law formula. As long as you have two of them, you can find the other one. So if you can find the resistance total using this formula and you have the voltage because of the battery, you can find the current by doing V equals IR. Um, in a series circuit, the current is constant throughout. That's very important. In a series circuit, the current is constant throughout the entire thing. The current flow has to be the same throughout. But the voltage gets used up as it moves through the circuit. So as you move through the circuit, you're using up voltage. So let's say uh, that we have 10 volts to start with. The first one uses up 5 volts. The second one uses up 3 volts. That's 8 volts out of 10. So we know that the third one can only use up Two volts. All right. If you want to know how much voltage is being used, uh, then you just have to do uh, V1, the voltage that a resistor has. It could be any number, but the voltage of a given resistor is equal to the current through the system times that resistor. So uh, for any given resistor, if you know the total current, you can multiply it by the resistance to find the voltage that it has. So voltage gets used up as it moves through the circuit in series. Um, we can't do the water hose example because I'm not in class, so we're just going to have to cancel that. Um, parallel circuits. A parallel circuit is one where each resistor has an independent path back to the battery. So each one has its own independent path back. So just to show you what I mean here, the, the electricity leaves this way, it goes through resistor 1 and comes back, leaves through resistor, leaves through the battery, goes through resistor two, comes back, leaves through resistor, goes through resistor three, and comes back. So each one has its own independent path to the battery. So if I break this one, the other two are still good. If I break this one, the blue one is still good. So red and green go out, blue is still fine. On a series circuit, however, if I break R1, the rest of them stop working. All right. If I break R3, the rest of them stop working. All right. It doesn't matter which one you break in a series circuit. If you break one in a series circuit, the whole series goes down. But if you break one in a parallel circuit, the series stays on, which is why this is the way you wire your house. All right. You don't want to have it set up so where if your light goes off in the bathroom that the lights in your entire house go out. So they wire your house parallel. Um, now, this is where it gets a little funky and parallel is just a little bit weird. So the way you add up resistance in a parallel circuit is with this formula. Now that's a little bit tricky. So I instead am going to write it like this. 
So if you're trying to figure out the resistance in a parallel circuit, what you need to do is just type it into the calculator as you see it here. You're gonna take one over your first resistor, let's say it's two ohms, plus one over your second resistor, let's say it's three ohms, plus one over your third resistor, let's say it's four ohms. Have all of that in parentheses, and then hit the X to the negative one button and it'll flip it for you. The weird thing about a parallel circuit is that the more resistors you have, the less resistance there is. It's a very strange thing. Um, but it's because of the way it is wired. Um, and so just like before in a parallel circuit, or sorry, in the series circuit, the total voltage, you can use V, uh, you can use Ohm's law, V is equal to IR. Um, but the difference between a series and a parallel circuit is that in a parallel circuit, the current is split as it goes down each path. So there's a total amount of current available and then each path gets its own. So if you think about a river and imagining a river splitting into three different paths, there's only so much water flowing down the river. If the river splits into three branches, then each branch is only gonna get a certain amount of the, uh, of the water flowing over it, all right? So like if there's 100 gallons per minute and the river splits into three paths, then each path can only get, you know, a certain percentage of that 100. So 50, 25, 25, or 30, 30, uh, 40, all right? Um, each path is only gonna get a certain amount of the current. The voltage, on the other hand, is the same down each path, all right? So if you think about like the, in the river example, if you think about the individual amount of like, maybe the speed of the river, uh, whenever they go down these different paths, the speed of the river is gonna be the same, but the current, the amount of water flowing through those different branches is going to be different. All right, um, so that's the difference between series and parallel circuits. Um, I'm gonna give you a couple of example problems here. All right, please look at the circuit below. Uh, what is the total resistance? What is the total current? What is the total uh, voltage? Um, and uh, I think I was supposed to give you the voltage. So let's give you the voltage. Let's say that that was uh, 20 volts, all right? And so the total resistance then, I just, I didn't make this number up, or I, I just made this number up. It's not like you were supposed to know that somehow. So what is the total resistance? Well, in series, we're just going to add them up. So the resistance total is equal to 5 plus 4 plus 2 plus 3. All right, I'm just adding up all of these resistors, and I get a total resistance of 9, 11, 14. So 14 ohms. 14 ohms is my total resistance. Total voltage is 20 volts, because that's the, the voltage that was given. And then... Total current is just going to be using Ohm's law. V is equal to IR. And so I would do, uh, sorry, uh, 20 equals I times 14. 20, 20 divided by 14 is equal to 1.43 amps. And so you could figure those out. Okay, so uh, this next part is the current over the 5 ohm resistor. So if you'll go back and look, you should note that the current through a series circuit is constant. So at any given point here, we got 1.43 uh, amps because that's the total current. 1.43, 1.43, 1.43. And that's just going to be the current through each one because the current is the same in a series circuit. The voltage drop, on the other hand, is going to be equal to, we're gonna do Ohm's law for each one. So the voltage drop for the five ohm is gonna be equal to 1.43 times five. Because remember, V is equal to IR. The voltage is what we're looking for. We know the current of each one is 1.43. Resistance of the five ohm resistor is five. So 1.43 times five is 7.15, and that would be in volts. The four ohm resistor would be four, times 1.43, the current times the resistance, and four times 1.43 is 5.72, and then three ohm resistor, three times 1.43 would be 4.29, and two ohm resistor, two times 1.43 would be 2.86. Now, the thing is, is that each, we have to add up to a total of 20 volts. So if I add all these up, they should equal 20. It might be a little off because I rounded the 1.43, but 7.15 plus 5.72 plus 4.29 plus 2.86 gives me 20. And so the voltage, the total voltage should add up to be 20. 
What is the power used by this circuit? Power is equal to voltage times current. And so we would do uh, 20 times current, which is 1.43. And so uh, 20 times 1.43 is 28.6. So 28.6 watts, whoops, 28.6 watts would be my power. And then how much power did each ohm use? You would do the same thing. You would just be multiplying the voltage by the current for each one of these, all right? Uh, and so I'll give you one example. The power through the five ohm resistor would be 1.43, the current that it uses, times the voltage that it uses, 7.15, and it would be uh, 10 Sorry, 10.2, okay? And then you could do the same thing. You could do 1.43 times 5.72, 1.43 times 4.29, 1.43 times 2.86 to get the power for each one of those. It's voltage times current. So we got the voltage here and the current here, all right? So this is a series. And then finally, we've got a parallel circuit. So let's look at a parallel circuit. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and put a 20 volt battery in here. So the total voltage should be 20 volts. What is the total resistance? All right, so this is where that weird formula comes into play. All right, so the total resistance is equal to, and you open a parentheses and you do 1 over 5 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 2. And then you close the parentheses and you put a negative 1 there. All right, and that's exactly how that needs to go into the calculator. You got 5 ohm resistor, 4 ohm resistor, a 3 ohm resistor, and a 2 ohm resistor. And so we're going to do 1 divided by 5 plus 1 divided by 4 plus 1 divided by 3 plus 1 divided by 2. And then put that all in parentheses, and then the x to the negative 1 button is going to give me 0.78. So the total resistance is equal to 0.78 ohms. Again, look at this. This is weird. It's strange. The resistance total is less than any of those resistors independently, okay? So the, the total resistance is less, uh, and that's okay. That's what it's supposed to be, all right? So if I want to figure out the total current, I'm going to do uh, V is equal to IR, where I just do 20 equals 0.78. Whoops, my bad. Equals I times 0.78. And so if I do 20 divided by 0 0.78, I get uh, I is equal to 25.6. So 25.6 amps is my total current. Now you should notice that the previous one, we only had 1.43 amps. So series circuits don't use nearly as much current as parallel circuits do. Parallel circuits use a ton of current. So if you wanted something to, like if something is using a parallel circuit, it is going to use an awful lot of uh, the battery really quickly. If you're using a battery, a parallel circuit is going to use up that battery incredibly fast compared to uh, a series circuit because it's running a tremendous amount more current. Okay. Okay, so what is the current over the 5 ohm resistor, 4 ohm resistor, 3 ohm resistor, and 2 ohm resistor? In a series circuit the current was all the same. But in a parallel circuit, we've got to do the V equals IR for each one of these, all right? So 20 volts, that's how much each one's getting, is equal to I times five. So if we divide it, 20 divided by five is four. So it would be four amps, okay? If I want to do it for the four ohm resistor, 20 volts equals I times four. And we find that, so 20 volts, the current would be five amps. Uh, and then 3 ohm resistor, 20 divided by 3, 20 volts equals I times 3. Uh, 20 divided by 3, uh, you know, I should be able to do this in my head at this point, but I can't. So 20 divided by 3 is 6.67. And finally, for the 2 ohm resistor, uh, 20 divided by 2. So 10 amps. Another thing that's weird about this is if you look back at the series circuit, the one uh, with the most voltage was the biggest resistor. But here, the one with the most current is the smallest resistor. 
So in a series circuit, the one with the one the, like if these were light bulbs, the light bulb that would burn brightest would be the one with the most resistance. But in a parallel circuit, it's the one with the least resistance that would burn the brightest. The voltage drop is the same for each path. It's 20 volts, 20 volts, 20 volts, and 20 volts. Each one gets the same voltage, but they all get different currents. Um, and again, to go back to my river analogy that I had earlier, this should make some level of sense. If you have a river that's flowing with 20, let's say it's going 20 meters per second with 25 gallons per second going across, then, uh, then whenever it splits, the path that has the least resistance, the one with the least rocks, the one with the, the steepest slope, the one that has the least resistance to the water is the one that's going to get the bulk of the water going down it. If there's a path that's a little bit harder for the river to go over, it's not going to have as much water uh, going over it. Uh, and then finally, power for the whole circuit. You're just going to do power equals voltage times current, uh, which would be 20 times 25.6. Again, notice how much bigger the power is here than the other one. It's 512 in comparison to uh, like 20 something. Um, and that means that it's going to use up the energy a lot faster. All right. So how much power did the five ohm use? Again, you just do power for each one. So I'm going to use like I would do four times 20, five times 20, 6.67 times 20, 10 times 20. So, uh, you know, you can do those in your head, but four times 20, or you maybe can't, but you can do them quickly. Four times 20 is 80. Uh, and that would be Watts four times uh, sorry, the 4 ohm resistor would be 5 times 20, which would be 100 watts. The 3 would be 6.67 times 20, which would be 100 and, uh, I'm going to go with 133 watts. And I'm guessing there, I don't know for sure. Uh, and then the, I'm curious now, 6.67 times 20, yeah, 133, I'm good. All right, and then uh, 10 amps times 20 volts would be 200 watts for that last one. All right, um, and so that is an example of all of the math that you will be responsible for. I will say that we're probably going to focus on the series circuits just because they're a little bit easier. Um, and so, uh, you know, whenever you're doing the problems, uh, just know that in series, it's the, the math is fairly simple for the resistors. In parallel, you've got to do this weird thing. All right, and if you can keep that straight, you're probably pretty good. Remember that series circuits, current is constant, voltage changes. In parallel circuits, current changes, voltage is constant. So if you can keep those two things straight, that'll help you out as well. Well, And I guess that's it. So go do.